Good day, Kamama Terrific. Samahan niyo ko ulit ngayon para tuklasin natin ang ating bagong lesson. And our lesson for today is Solving Multi-Step Routine and Non-Routine Word Problems Involving Multiplication and Addition or Subtraction. Uh, the content standard the learner demonstrates understanding of multiplication of whole numbers including money and the performance standard the learner is able to apply multiplication of whole numbers including money in mathematical problems and real life situation after going through this you are expected to solve multi-step routine and non-routine problems involving multiplication and addition or subtraction using appropriate problem-solving strategies and tools. And now let's review first. Solve the following problem. Mr. Lakta was a coconut plantation. Each of his 25 workers receives an average weekly pay of 3,500 pesos. How much does Mr. Lakta pay weekly for his workers. Let us solve the problem using the four-step plan. First is understand, know what it what is asked. So how much does Mr. Lakta pay weekly for his workers? Next step is plan. Determine the operation to be used, which is multiplication. Write the number sentence. So we have 3,500 pesos times 25 equals N. And the third step is solve. Show your solution. So 3,500 times 25. is equals to 87,500 number four is check and look back check your answer ask yourself if your answer is possible you can simply go back to the solution then the final answer so Mr. Laktao pay 87,500 pesos weekly for his workers now let's read the word problem below. During weekends, Rico helps his mother sell fish in the market. On Saturday, he sold 125 kilograms of bangus. On Sunday, he sold 250 kilograms of tilapia. If those are the weekly average sales, how many kilograms of bangus were sold in a month? How many kilograms of tilapia were sold in a month? And how many kilograms of fish were sold in all? Let us analyze the given problem and answer the following questions. Question number one. How many kilograms of bangus did Rico sell on Saturday? Yes, that is correct. 125 kilograms. Number two. How many kilograms of tilapia did Rico sell on Sunday? That is correct. 250 kilograms. And number three, how many weeks are there in a month? Yes, of course. There are four weeks. Number four. If that's the case, how many Saturdays are there in a month? How many Sundays will there be? That is correct. So we have four Saturdays and four Sundays. Now, let us solve the problem. Step number one, we should get first how many kilos of bangus was sold in a month. Since there are four weeks in a month, we will multiply the number of kilos of bangus by four. So 125 times four. 
125, that is the kilograms of bango sold on Saturday. And 4, that's, that is the weeks in a month. So 4 times 5, 20, bring down 0, then regroup 2. 4 times 2, 8, plus 2, 10, bring down 0, then regroup 1. 4 times 1 equals 4, plus 1 equals 5. So 500 kilograms of bangos sold in the man. Step number 2. We will also get how many kilograms of tilapia was sold in a month. We will also multiply it by 4 since there are 4 weeks in a month. So 250 times 4. So 250 kilograms of tilapia sold in Sunday. And 4, that is a weeks in a month. So 4 times 0 equals 0. 4 times 5, 20, bring down 0, then regroup 2. 4 times 2, 8, plus 2, equals 10. So, 1,000 kilograms of tilapia sold in the man. Step number 3, add the number of kilograms of bangus and kilograms of tilapia sold in a man. So, we have 500 plus 1,000. So 500, that is a kilogram of bangus sold in a month. And 1,000, that is a kilogram of tilapia sold in a month. So 0 plus 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0, 5 plus 0 plus 5, then bring down 1. So we have 1,500. So 1,500 kilograms of fish were sold in all. Let's solve another example. Bus fares cost 12 pesos for the first 4 kilometers and 2 pesos for the next additional kilometer or part of kilometer thereof. How much will Ronel pay for his 8 kilometer trip? Let us analyze the problem by answering the following questions. Number 1. How much will it cost for the first 4 kilometers? Yes, 12 pesos. Then how much shall be added to the fare of every kilometer in excess of 4 kilometers? That is right, 2 pesos. How many kilometers was her trip? Yes, that is correct, 8 kilometers. And number 4, how many kilometers is the excess of the minimum distance fare? That is right, 4 kilometers. Number 5, how much will Brunel pay for his trip? Very good, 20 pesos. How will we solve the problem? First, of course we should subtract the distance traveled by Brunel from the first 4 kilometers. Number 2, you will add it 4 times or multiply by 4 since there is an excess of 4 kilometers. And last, you have to add the fare cost for the first 4 kilometers and the cost for additional 4 kilometers. Let us solve. Step 1. We should subtract the distance traveled by Runel from the first 4 kilometers. So we have 8 minus 4. So 8, that is the distance traveled by Runel. And 4, that is the first 4 kilometers. So 8 minus 4 equals 4. So 4 is the excess of 4 kilometers. Then step 2. Since the 2 pesos will be added in the fare of every additional kilometer, you will add it 4 times since there is an excess of 4 kilometers. Or you can multiply it in 4. We have 2 pesos times 4. So 2 pesos, the cost for kilometers in excess of 4 kilometers. And 4, that is the excess to first 4 kilometers. So 4 times 0 equals 0. 4 times 0 equals 0. 4 times 2 equals 8 pesos. So 8 
8 pesos is the cost of additional 4 kilometers. Or 2, pe two pesos plus 2 pesos plus 2 pesos plus 2 pesos is equal to 8 pesos. Then step 3. Add now the fair cost of the first 4 kilometers and the cost for additional 4 kilometers. So 12 pesos plus 8 pesos. So 12 pesos is cost for the first 4 kilometers. Then 8 pesos cost of additional 4 kilometers. So 0 plus 0 equals 0. Then 0 plus 0 equals 0. 2 plus 8 equals 10. We bring down 0, then regroup 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. So we have 20 pesos is the amount paid by Runel for 8 kilometer trip. Here is another example. In a cinema, 124 people can occupy a row. If there are 12 rows and 284 seats are not occupied, how many seats are occupied? To analyze and solve the problem, you can do these steps. So number one is understand, so read and understand the problem. Number two, know what is asked for in the problem, which is the number of seats occupied. Number three, know the hidden information, which is how many seats are there in all. So find the necessary information. The given facts are, number one is 124 people can occupy a row. Then there are 12 rows. So 284 seats not occupied. Plan. Determine the operation to be used, which is or multiplication and subtraction. So we have two operations. Number two to get the total number of seats. So 124 times 12. So 124 that is the people can be seated in a row. And 12 that is the number of rows. So number three to deduct the seats not occupied from the total number of seats you have two. The total number of seats minus number of seats not occupied. Number four is write the number sentence for the hidden questions, which is 124 times 12 minus 284 equals n. Next is solve. Solve using the operations. So 124 times 12. So 2 times 4 equals 8. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times 1 equals 2, 1 times 4, 4, 1 times 2, 2, 1 times 1, 1, then add 8, bring down 8, 4 plus 4, 8, 2 plus 2, 4, then bring down 1, so we have 1,488 total number of seats in cinema, so 1,488 minus the 284, 8 minus 4 equals 4. 8 minus 8, 0. 4 minus 2, 2. Then bring down 1. So we have 1,204 seats are occupied. Then check and look back. See if your, if your answer makes sense. So there are 1,204 occupied seats in the cinema. Let us study another problem. The street lights are 20 meters apart. If there are 10 street lights, what is the distance from the first street light to the last street light? How will we solve the given problem aside from using Collier's method? So we can actually solve the given problem by drawing an illustration first.
since there are nine spaces between the lights, we multiply nine times twenty equals one hundred eighteen meters. So the distance between the first and last street light is one hundred eighteen meters. How about this example? Let's study and solve what is asked. Nancy has 500 sheets of paper. She gives 6 sheets of paper to every student in a class. There are 50 students in the class. How many sheets of paper has she left? Step 1. Find the number of sheets of paper that she gave out. Okay, we have to multiply 50 times 6, 50 students times 6 sheets of paper to every student in the class. So we have 300 sheets. So she gave out 300 sheets of paper. Then step 2, find the total number of sheets of paper she has left. Okay, since 500 sheets and 300 sheets she gave out, so how many sheets were left? So we have to subtract 500 sheets minus 300 sheets she gave out. So 500 minus 300 equals 200. So she has 200 sheets of paper left. Yes, 200 sheets of paper left. Okay, now, it's your turn. Get your notebook and ball pen and let us solve the following problems. Use any strategy to solve. 